With blood and rage of crimson red, ripped from a corpse so freshly dead, together with our hellish hate, we'll burn you all. That is your fate. This is Red Lantern Russell from Tomes of Evil. And you're listening to Sector 2814, a Green Lantern podcast. Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets, and our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrott, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. In brightest day. In blackest nights. No evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might. Beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome back to Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast. I am Phil. Joining me as always, Master of the Core, it is. I am Will. Hey, everyone. And... Again, no Mr. Kona, hopefully soon here. <laughs> but, hey kids, are you sick of daylight savings time? Because, hey, have I got a story for you tonight? <laughs> That's right. He hates it, Precious. He hates it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, we're going to talk Final Night, miniseries, and it's tie to Green Lantern 80, and a little story called Parallax, Emerald Knight. Number one. I wonder who that's about. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so me and Will were just talking offline. I guess uh, I'm assuming the li- the newest Green Lantern issue has been pushed back because now all these websites are saying April 12 uh, will be issue 12, and not not March today. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so an ex- yeah, so that's about a month. So yeah, it's about an extra month. Oh well, Let me see. I was getting so excited too. Yeah, they yeah. skipped a month because yeah, because issue eleven came out February fifteenth. So, mm-hmm. <sighs> all right. Again, might just be a shipping thing. Mm-hmm. There is a worldwide paper shortage and global logistics and supply chain issues, and a, a pandemic and a war, and I'm um, I'm um, climate change and just everything. So you know, pick your pick your apocalypse at this point. We're living through multiples. Daylight savings time. <laughs> and daylight savings time. God, I hate daylight, daylight savings time. I hate it. I ranted about that in my newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I rant. I get ranty when I talk about daylight savings time. <laughs> oh, hey, I don't think we talked. To, or Did we talk about it last time? I can't remember. But um, there's been two episodes so far. Did you watch Picard yet? Season two? Yes. Mm-hmm. Seen both episodes. They're moving kind of slow, but uh, it's been good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like it, but like that second episode, like the opening, okay, kids, spoilers. I was just like, even if you don't believe him, wouldn't you like at least like you explain what you think? You know, yeah, going like on? ask ask the questions. You know, like okay, well, wait, whoa, hang on, this is all very strange. Can you tell me kind of what's going on here? <laughs> But I think at one point, then you say, oh, yeah, Q seems more erratic than usual. And I'm just like, shouldn't that worry you a lot? <laughs> <laughs> one would think it should, you know. <laughs> I mean, if Q seems like mentally unstable or, you know, worried, shouldn't that be <laughs> big warning sign? And all of reality has been. Uh... And he has a kid, remember, from Voyager. Mm. That's right. That's right. I mean, we can bring up bring, that. Uh, be bringing in all kinds of Voyager stuff. I mean, Seven and Nine's on this show. We've got a board queen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, half of a board queen. <laughs> How do we time travel? I know. James Kirk and them did it like a dirty version, you know, just slingshotting around the planet. Yeah. Like multiple times. <laughs> but he had Spock. We've got her. <laughs> oh, crazy. I. I didn't watch last week's Discovery. I guess the season finale is coming up because I, I saw something. Yep. 
So last week's ones. was pretty good. It, of course, ended on, uh, uh, you know, a building up of the season type of cliffhanger that, you know, they have to do something about it or yes. really bad things happen. So, but yeah, it was a pretty good episode. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, did you see uh, today they dropped the trailer for the Miss Marvel TV series? I haven't. I've seen bits of it. I haven't watched the yeah. whole thing through yet, but it looks pretty cool. Yeah, instead of her being able to change like her size or shape, or you know, it looks like she has energy powers. Mm-hmm. And all I saw was like somebody watch that uh, trailer, and I, I don't know if she touches like a bracelet or something. And someone was like, "Quantum, quantum band? No, 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 no." <laughs> <laughs> I uh, despair that we'll ever get Quasar in live action. But. I know, especially if they're going to give her <laughs> energy powers now. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I could be certainly be wrong, but mm. there's always hope, I guess. But Charlie and I talked about this, and I go, I wonder why they gave her ener- energy powers. Are they just worried about, like, making the shrinking and growing and whatever, stretching, like, look good every episode? Or I, I don't know. I mean. I don't know how much that even costs, that effect. but you know. Yeah. But I mean, that's what she's known for. If you look at the comics, you know, mm-hmm. she's got the big, how the much big you... punch down fists. <laughs> how much would I bet that's going to change? <laughs> like I said, she's an inhuman. I'm surprised. I'm su- I would be surprised if they change that origin soon. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, she's an. In- I don't care. <laughs> Alexa, stop. <laughs> See, everyone wants to get on this conversation. That's right. But yeah, no, in the comics, no, Miss Marvel's an inhuman, but after that TV show fiasco, I don't know if we're going to... Uh... Well, they're bringing all of the the other shows into the umbrella, right? I mean... Oh yeah, all those Netflix shows are coming to this. Oh, are they there today? I forget. It's, uh, if they're not on there, yeah, they're, I, think they, I think it's sometime this week. Uh, and they, you know, the Inhumans were the core of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so... I know, it's well, I see Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., are, I guess, are coming to Disney Plus too, but it's like... The actual Inhumans TV show. I haven't heard a peep about that. Who knows? <laughs> I never did watch that. Oh, never my did. God. I, all I got to say is, I mean, Charlie, who can who defends everything Marvel, yeah, he, 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 he can't defend it. He didn't even finish watching it. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just bad. It's like it's like they cut off Medusa's hair in, like, what is that, the first episode? It's like, really? I don't know if they didn't want to do, didn't want to do the special effect or what. But, I mean, that's that's her thing. I know. That's literally her thing, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm just looking at my Disney Plus to see if there's shows. I don't see them yet. But yeah, I thought it was I thought it was sometime this week. Watch, it'll probably be like Friday or something. Uh, and who knows? Oh. Who, who knows who's going to be in Doctor Strange? What? In uh, em- Parallax Emerald Knight, uh, Ron Mars made the Silver Surfer Green Lantern crossover canon because he said, I chased him in this universe and into another. Yes. I wanted... yes. <laughs> so that's in continuity. <laughs> yes. Oh, and I do want to talk about Ganthet a little bit when we get to that point. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. The parallax issue. Yes. Uh huh. Now I read them in final night one, green lantern, 80 final night two and three. Yes. Parallax. And then final night four. So did I, okay. I think that's the order they set out. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, kids! But I guess uh, Daredevil and all those Netflix shows are coming to at uh, Disney Plus. Well, by Thomas Hits podcast, they're already there. But yes, as I'm recording tonight, I guess. Oh, cool. <laughs> well, East Coast three three oh one a.m. <laughs> <laughs> in that's two four six hours in six hours. <laughs> so five yeah. and a half hours. So I was gonna say if you you well for you it'll be two a.m. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna stay up and wait for that. So <laughs> I've already seen it. Alright, uh, yeah, anything else, anything else big in the world, though? I saw a little bit of news about someone had wrapped up their work on the Green Lantern series, like one of the producers or something, um, but it didn't really say anything about, you know, no timelines, what exactly was wrapped up, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe writing or something, or? Who knows, <laughs> at this point. Because they, you know, they, they didn't start filming it yet, did they? I don't think so. I think they've cast... Guy Gardner. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be... I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't think we get Kyle or Hal. Mm-mm. Yeah, I don't think they had a plan. I don't I'm, not even know, I'm not even sure if we get John I don't think... There. I don't think, because I remember everyone saying, it's like, well, oh, that's a good idea. Don't put, like, your, you know, your three 
you know, most well-known Green Lanterns in there, Hal, John, and Kyle. Yeah, because I think it what was that. It was John, Guy Gardner, Alan Scott. Like, Alan Scott was one that I was going to show. I think Kilowog's going to be in I there, too. I think so, and, yeah. And one other... One other Green Lantern, one of the not one other non-human Green Lantern was it the uh, I don't remember. I'm completely blanking on it. So yeah, I can't remember. Are you not one to talk about this? Because Guy Gardner shows up in it. Is that what? <laughs> <laughs> what final night? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, again, like we said, I mean, this is like a um, you know, it, until rebirth, he just shows up in like random events, like here. Well, and you know, this is um. It's interesting because after 50, so when he goes full parallax, you should never go full parallax, by the way. Uh, True. <laughs> he doesn't show up again until, what, 56? 58? Who? How? Yeah, par- parallax, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, uh, but, but, but what's that zero that takes place between 55 and 56? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well. Well, zero hour. <laughs> zero hour, yeah. And he doesn't really appear in Zero Hour until... Like, what? Like, the penultimate like issue, the, pretty like much? The, like, well, okay, it starts at, what, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1? Well, it goes 4, 3, 2, yeah, four, and three, I think two. he shows up towards the end of 1, and then... And then is in 0. 0, and then gotcha. him and Kyle literally, like, fall in the Green Lantern 0, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. Then he comes he does back. show up in Guy Gardner Warrior, you know, when they have the Emerald Fallout. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you know, we're talking under 10 appearances as Parallax, right? Yeah. Probably. Mm-hmm. Or maybe right at 10. I mean, it's not a lot. Do you think somebody, some editor had a problem with it? Or the, or were they or were they just like, oh, the fans ain't digging this? I don't know. I mean. We, we keep getting, time... <laughs> we keep getting letters from this guy, in, from this kid in Florida. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> or, no, no, Arkansas, Arkansas man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All over. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think. By the time, and I, it's just been so long ago that when Final Night came out and, you know, he died saving the earth, that's kind of, it was kind of a relief because, Mm -hmm. you know, he, he couldn't be around and be whiny anymore, you know, (laughs) be not, not the character that he was. Oh, yeah. Um, but then it's another, was, uh, what is it, Day of Vengeance? Is that the crossover? I think, yeah. Was that 98? It was like two years after this or was it? Was it? Was it ninety? I think it's something like that. Yeah. Let's see if I can find the list here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Day of Judgment. Sorry, not Day of Vengeance. Yeah. Uh, Day of oh, it was ninety nine. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. Wow. So Final Night was ninety six. Day of Judgment is ninety nine, and then he comes back in two thousand five. So he spends most of the time during the the Kyle era as dead, right? <laughs> the dead or the Spectre. Or the Spectre, yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of interesting. I mean... Oh, yeah. I don't know. All right. Do we I wanna, find it interesting. Do, do we want to get to these? We got six issues. Uh, Let's do it. <laughs> all right. So, all right, kids. Starts, yes. Final, the final night, number one. That's right. Uh, November 1996. Poor Starfire, man. I know. <laughs> uh, Dusk by writer Carl Kessel, penciler Stuart Amonin, uh, inker Jose Marzan Jr., colorist Lee Lothridge, letterer Gaspar Saladino, and editors Alessandro Morales and Dan Thorsland. Uh, all right. <clears throat> An alien space vessel crash lands on Earth. Wait a minute. So they're going to skip all the Starfire stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I got a synopsis yeah, I in it. I think so. they, uh, yeah, they skip all the Starfire stuff. Yeah, basically, what New Tamaran gets blown up. Basically, everyone but Starfire. <laughs> Starfire and Dusk, right? Yeah, she helps the alien <laughs> Dusk escape. You know, so yeah, kids, New Tamaran gets blown up, but but yeah, the alien she helps escape. Uh, an alien space vessel crash lands on Earth just off the West River in Metropolis. A woman named Dusk emerges, only to find Superman and the Legion of Superheroes standing before her. Saturn Girl uses her telepathy to translate the frightened woman's thoughts. Dusk warns them that an entity known as a Sun Eater is en route to the to this star system. When it arrives, it will consume all the energy from the sun, thus destroying all life on the planet Earth. But it's not really the whole sucking all the energy out of the sun that kills everybody. No, it's... it's, it's, a, spoiler. it's yeah, the giant, well, you know, yeah. Nova. The, 
Right now, they think they're going <laughs> to freeze. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> Superman calls together a special convention of superheroes. Attending are members of the JLA, past and present, the Legion, the Marvel family, and many others. Mr. Miracle decides to create an oversized boom tube to funnel the Sun Eater to an unoccupied domain. The Sun Eater overloads the boom tube and the plan fails. The next strategy involves the creation of a secondary sun to act as a lure for the Sun Eater. All the energy-based heroes pour their powers into the creation of a new sun, but this proves to be a futile, a uh, fruitless endeavor. <sighs> Elsewhere, Lex Luthor decides that it is time to step up and lend a hand. <laughs> not that he's, not that he's, uh, he got his all, his uh, neuron makeover. He's like, yeah, let's go, let's go back. Let's go back, yeah. Well, it's like, I guess you gotta trust Lex, because it's like, you know, he's gonna die too, you know. Yeah, it's it's his planet too. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he can go anywhere. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, he, okay, kids. Here's all, here's the characters we see in this. Alpha Centurion. Remember him? Uh, yeah, the, I was like, wait, who? I vaguely remember Alpha Centurion. <laughs> he, he basically was like a Roman gladiator. Gets taken away by aliens when they bring him. By the time they bring him back, it's like the present day. Oh, wow. I completely forgot. Yeah, about yeah. That. And they, they give him like these superpowers. Yeah. Uh, the Alien Dusk, of course. Captain Adam, the Legion of Superheroes, Brainiac 5, Cosmic Boy, Gates, Inferno, Saturn Girl, Spark, and Ultra Boy. Mr. Miracle. Oh, yeah, we get Dr. Polaris, too. Yeah. That, that, that was really kind of, okay, that's it? <laughs> well, well, once again, it's like, well, hey, you know, if he don't help, he's going to die, too. So, yeah. uh, Kitty Faulkner, Maxima, Superman, Tachyon, Wave Rider. Oh, my. Oh, man. They must. <laughs> They listed Batman under supporting characters. Uh, well, Batman is still holds a grudge, as we'll see. Batman, <laughs> my favorite character. Big Barda, Contessa. Oh yeah, Lex is. Oh yeah, Lex is married at this point, kids. Uh, yeah. Fire, Firestorm, Green Lantern, Jimmy Olsen, Lex Luthor, Metropolis, Special Crimes Unit, Phantom Stranger, Ray, Sentinel, Spectre, Superboy, Warrior, and Wonder Woman. Oh yeah, guys in the background. Don't worry, kids. Yeah. Do you think Guy would have been in the story at all if they had if they didn't start using warriors in this storyline? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe because they had him go. They had Hal go talk to him, right? Oh, uh, true, true, true. So, I mean, we usually and he did go see Hal, and so he went to see John and and Kyle, of course, and Guy. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think anybody else. Oh, oh. I think Tomar Tooth, the other alien on the Green Lantern. Oh, show, yeah. Maybe. I for, oh, I'm trying to remember because I read this all in one big chunk. Does he go to? Does he talk? He talks to John at some point, right? Yeah, he heals him. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. All right. So, any other thoughts on this one? Lots of setup. Um, yeah, yeah. It. Uh, oh yes, and these and these little members of the Legion of Superheroes are stuck in the in the 20th century at in the, the moment. Past. So, yes. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that because I mean that was a fun story too because I was a, I was reading the Legion back then. Mm -hmm. Still kind of a Legion fan, but. Yeah, I do remember it's like after this storyline, it's this I think this is right yeah, this is right before Superman gets married cuz uh his powers go out and then like they they're not once the sun returns spoilers like they're not coming back. Doesn't seem like so oh, he, yeah. he he goes through all this trouble to like try to like, you know, jump start his powers, which it seems like eventually he does, but then eventually he turns into electricity. There's electric blue the electric boogaloo Superman. Yes. <laughs> And eventually yeah. he gets split into Superman two. Superman red and Superman blue. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it was cool that I'm I'm pretty sure Carl Kessel is a is a big Legion fan as mm -hmm. well. Uh, and I know I'm pretty sure Stuart Eminem is as well because he actually drew some of the Legion. I think. I think. But yeah. uh, having them back there was is was cool, you know. And mm -hmm. this was the second, the rebooted Legion. Second second version, because uh, there's there's a third, but then they go back, and then there's an original, then there's this group fifty two. I don't know. I'm I'm there's a bunch of legions at this point because they, they eventually had during Final Crisis Legion of Three Worlds. Oh yeah, right. Which was the original Legion, this this Legion, Legion number two, and then the the rebooted whatever Legion that came out of some thing. I don't remember. I was going <laughs> to say, did this Legion come from Crisis on Infinite Earth? Did they come from Zero Hour? Because, yeah, I mean, like I said, they always seem like it. Legion takes the most, you know, most damage. They always take crisis. the brunt of any 
problems with continuity. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, because like the change is starting in the present and just like get bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we knew Superboy. What? <laughs> He was never super boy. Wait, now there's a super boy. Hang on. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> oh my. Burn. All right. Uh, so do we want to get to the Green Lantern issue? <laughs> yeah, jump into the Green Lantern issue. All right, kids. Which takes remember- up immediately. Like, yes. Immediately remember after. <laughs> remember <laughs> the kids. Last remember kids. When I told you, hey, one of these days, Doctor Light's gonna come back. Well, today's the day, kids. <laughs> Today is the day. <laughs> That's right, Green Lantern, Volume 3, Number 80, November 1996, Light in Darkness. Uh, what about that cover, Shedding Some Doctor Light? <laughs> <laughs> and look at him. <laughs> Made himself a little fancy costume in that battery. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get to that battery. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so, wait, where's my creative team? There we go. Writer, of course, Ron Mars. Penciler. Ah, ah, ah. Come on, man. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> All right, kids. Friend of the show, Ron Mars. This is Ron Mars. You are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. <laughs> he cracks the whip more than Lilith, kids. Jeez. <laughs> well, that's not that's true. No one cracks the whip like Lilith. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Lilith is hard. It's all rape and murder, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, so penciler J.H. Williams III, inker Mick Gray, colorist Pamela Rambo, uh, letters Chris Eliopoulos, and editor Kevin Dooley and Eddie Berganza. All right. All right, so light and darkness. After helping create an artificial sun in an attempt to lure away the sin eater, or the sun eater, Green Lantern returns to his apartment to recharge his ring. The cow surprise, Dr. Light has emerged from the Green Lantern power battery <laughs> after having been trapped inside it years ago by Al Jordan. In Green Lantern number 36, kids. That's right. <laughs> Editor's note, even. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's been a while. Yes, kids. Ed- uh, editor's note. Uh, Dr. Light demonstrates his new powers in a brief fight with Green Lantern, but Cal chooses instead to beg for Light's help against the Sun Eater. However, Dr. Light, of course being Dr. Light, becomes frightened by the sight of the eclipse sun and decides to evacuate Earth. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> just so many things in this issue. So, yeah, so Light pops out of the... I mean, that, that battery's been sparking for the last two months, so... Yeah, exactly. When it comes I out, wonder if you ever found it, Donna's note. Yes. <laughs> Oh, there he, but it, okay, so is he completely insane or is like he, cause he's going on about worlds inside that battery, so. Well, you know, Sinestro was in the central power battery too. That's what I was thinking was the a, minute he said like that. This, yeah. This, this it, reality inside it, I guess, or something. So, oh, that, that's not to say that Dr. Light's not totally oh, yeah. off his rocker. And little column A, he little is. column B. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yes, the answer is yes, both of those things. <laughs> and I just love how he comes out. And of course, it's like, okay, so how long ago was Green Lantern 36 compared to 80? What was that, like three, four years like, you know, previous to this? Uh, three years would have been 72, so three years and eight months approximately. Okay. You so. know, given, no, uh, with a zero in there, so three years and nine months, I guess. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's so funny because he pops out. He's you know he, he doesn't see how Jordan. He sees this younger Green Lantern, different costume. Hey, the sun's gone out. He, he's like, what kind of futuristic world have I got? You know, because <laughs> it's been less than four years in the real world. They yeah. can't have. Been, how long could it have been in you know in, in month, DC time? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> to the world of tomorrow. <laughs> but I love how he gives himself a fancy new costume while he was in the in the battery. Uh huh. Must have a tailor on one of those worlds. And it's interesting that that's the chunk of battery that he happened to be in, but you know, <laughs> whatever. Although, I mean, I, I've thought of this long and hard over the years. I mean, did he go from Hal's battery somehow into the central battery? So then when maybe when the central battery was destroyed, he like got zapped back in the Cal's battery, maybe? I, that sounds, that's an excellent, let's go with that. <laughs> Oh my god, can you imagine, like, <laughs> instead of going to that battery, if, like, when Hal blew it up, but, like, he would have, like, somehow been, like, shunted into Hal's body, like, 
Oh my god! What the heck? <laughs> Who would have been more disappointed, Doctor Later House? Son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, Parallax yeah. is in there, like, oh my god, it's crowded enough in here as it is. <laughs> exactly, because Gantt's in there too at the moment. Oh, <laughs> it's a party, I know. <laughs> but yeah, this—I mean, there wasn't a ton to this. Although it wasn't even in the synopsis, Cal goes to see Donna, and you know, she's like, "I feel helpless." You know, she doesn't have any powers or dark star suits, so she's like, mm-hmm. she's talking about going to see her son, which we'll get to. And which he- we'll, who we'll get to next week? <laughs> yeah, and. And she uh, gets mad at Kyle and then doesn't get mad at Kyle because he said his mom was dead. His mom's not really dead. Yeah. So. <laughs> so is that Mars just going, oops, I changed my mind? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I thought he explained it pretty well. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, he came up with a, uh, a believable story point, but I was just wondering if that was always the plan or if he was just like, you know what? I want to give him my mom. Well, I mean, his dad's alive. He just doesn't. Yeah, doesn't know where he's at. Know where he is. <laughs> and we don't even get into that until the power of Ion, right? Which is post rebirth. Yeah. Right. Yeah, post rebirth. <laughs> so I wonder if Mars was just like, yeah, I want to establish that mom and get that whole relationship repaired before I bring dad back in. Mm-hmm. But I like that cover. Mm-hmm. Is that a is that a Banks? Um, I don't know. It's either. I'm looking on my phone, it's either I'd say it's either a Banks or a Pelletier, probably one of those two. But yeah, no, because uh, in like I said, inside we got the uh, J. H. Williams the Third art. What do you think of that inside art? Well, it's not bad, J- but it's it's different than it's, Banks or different. Pelletier. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not as clean, but no. Uh, J. H. Williams and Mick Gray. Uh, I mean, they, they come together and do Promethea like in three, you know, in 99, yeah. 98, 99, somewhere in there for ABC Comics. And that's, and he's an artist that continually kind of ups his game because that's, he's, he just keeps getting better and better and better. And, you know, yeah. like that woman was great. I mean, he's, he's just an amazing artist. But this is some of his earliest work too, I think. Or I wonder if they were given a bank, was it Banks next issue? Maybe they were giving him a uh, jump on uh, next issue's big event. Uh, well, uh, what would that be? <laughs> because because there's a ton of ton of uh, people in, in in that book. So indeed, indeed. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I thought yeah, the art wasn't bad, but it was just very different than what we're used to in this book. Mm-hmm. It was. It was different. It was. It was darker. I mean. I know it's a sun eater and, you know, I, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, it was, uh, I mean, this, this is more of a sci-fi book now, you know, clean. Yeah. And this doesn't have that clean kind of slickness to it that, you know, we have with like, you know, Jeff Johnson or Daryl Banks or, you know, any of the other yeah. artists that we've had on the, on the series. But I mean, it's not bad. It's just, it was different. And I think it, if you're going to have someone different like that, then, it, I think it really helped that the story was kind of also, you know, darker. Yeah. Right? Again, I wonder if that's just because it was a big event. Because at first I was like, wait a minute, it was Banks on uh, Parallax, but no, he wasn't on that. He wasn't on that book. So again, maybe yeah. it was maybe it was next issue's big event. So uh, let's see if I can tell you who did the cover. Um, it is a Daryl Banks cover. Okay, so I thought you were right, Doctor. Like coming out <laughs> of that battery like a genie or something. Yeah. And let's see who does the next issue. Looks like uh, Banks does the cover and Banks does the pencils. Yep. What, 81? Yep, for 81. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, I knew he did the interior. Yeah. All right. Uh, Should we get to back to final night? You bet. All right. Uh, All right. Hold on, kids. Let me pull up the synopsis here. There we go. Uh, Number two. Number two. (laughs) So, yeah, it's... All right, kids, we're taking this in order there. They happen, so. It makes things a little more complicated. <laughs> I'm going to push some units, Will. That's right. <laughs> All right, the final night, number two from November 1996. Yeah, was this a weekly thing? I couldn't remember. Uh, I think it might have been. Because, yeah, so far everything's been November. You know what? I wonder if they did it for, an... there's probably other reasons, but if they did it weekly just so it like slot in with like the Superman books and stuff and. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I mean, since and Batman books at yeah. that point. Yeah. Uh, let me see what I can find uh, out. Especially since uh, 
Carl Kessel's writing it. I, th- I believe he was writing one of the Superman books at the time. Yeah, I think was he writing Superboy? Maybe. Ah, uh, oh, maybe, sure. maybe. I thought it, maybe he was. I thought he was writing a, one of them, like Adventures. Of Sus- well, I thought he was writing actual Superman too. I can't remember. Uh, all right. Yeah, so. it was. It was published weekly. Yep. Wow. See, I completely forgot about that. You demand. I well, I forgot too. No, I just see that the you know the month is still November. So, mm-hmm. uh, darker grows the night. <laughs> uh, same team as the first. Uh, you know, as final the final night number one. All right, Lex Luthor arrives in Metropolis, ready to help out during this new crisis. Superman welcomes him to the conference, and he immediately sets about forming new strategies to save Earth. Other heroes, meanwhile, work overtime across the globe, helping out people in need. Ray saves a trapped family from a burning building while Wonder Woman douses the flames by carrying a fire truck atop her shoulders. That'll work. <laughs> Hi, whoever this is. I can't see your name. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, Superman's losing his powers because the sun's going out. So, yeah, so Wonder Woman might be the strongest hero right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're pretty much equal at any other time. Yeah. So. Uh, that would be. I'm trying to remember. I don't think I was reading Wonder Woman at the time. That'd be interesting to be like, oh yeah, Wonder Woman's gonna have to step up because Superman's, you know, mm-hmm. almost normal, you know, nor almost normal human level at this point. Well, not yet, but soon. Soon, but yes, because we see in Paris, France, Batman encounters Vandal Savage, who is in the midst of stealing the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Which oh, is just kind of random, right? I know, I know. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. So, you know, okay, the sun's gone out. The whole world's in chaos. But meanwhile, Batman's tracked down Vandal Savage. The France, this, you know, it's like if you can't save the Earth, that that Mona Lisa thing's going to be kind of pointless. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Marnell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, kids. That's Marnell from the uh, Biters Walking Dead podcast. All right. Uh, Hi, Marnell. <laughs> Vandal tries to shoot Batman, but Superman arrives just in time to deflect the bullets. The impact still takes its toll on the Man of Steel, however, whose strength is waning with the absence of yellow solar radiation. (sighs) I was just waiting for Batman to be like, you know, I have Kevlar, right? (laughs) Wait, uh, oh, thank you for saving me. I don't dodge bullets on a nightly basis. Yeah, I I Vandal mean, I guess, I guess, I guess, you know, that was just really Kessel tra- good at shooting stuff. Right? Uh, I know. Yeah. I guess that was just Kessel <laughs> trying to show, oh, hey, super, you know, look, Superman uses his powers, but he's winded now, you know. <laughs> so Luther, uh, Luther works with Brainiac 5 of the Legion of Superheroes and invents a probe designed to analyze the Sun Eater. Green Lantern flies the probe into the heart of the Sun Eater, but is forced to abort the mission when the probe begins to overload. Uh, yes, and it, he disappears. Yes, he, yes, they, uh, yes, he disappears, yes, <laughs> while they probe the Sun Eater. I hope it's going somewhere <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dusk wanders the snowy streets of Metropolis. A gang of hungry civilians come upon her, blaming her for bringing the Sun Eater to Earth. Flash, the greatest hero ever, Nightwing, and Robin arrive to fight off the frightened mob. Dusk flees, but the mob pursues her. Suddenly, a young costume hero named Pharaoh arrives on the scene and defends Dusk from the throng of desperate citizens. Wasn't there a Pharaoh in the original Legion? Pharaoh lad, yes. yes. And he dies killing the Sun Eater in a story in the ah, future. Ah, so. see, see. <laughs> they're, trying to, they're trying to trick you, kids. Exactly. <laughs> so, what do you think of this one, Will? Uh, you know, it's still... There's a lot of this that's just letting them kind of tell little tiny, lots of little tiny stories because yeah, there's not really a villain. You know, there's not a, they're fighting against, you know, a force of, na- they're fighting against yeah. the Sun Eater. And, you know, it's, I really find it funny because at this point, you know, DC had consciously depowered most of their, you know, yeah. brought power levels down after Crisis. Oh yeah, you know, especially and, and Superman. Power. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, to see them having such trouble with a single Sun Eater when we get all kinds of the crazy stuff, you know, from Final Crisis and uh, the Sun Eaters in the Grant Morrison, you know, there were lots of Sun Eaters and yeah. they come from vampires, by the way, who live long enough, which I thought was a really kind of, I don't know if that's a retcon that he came up with, but I thought, hmm. oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. So, um, but it, see, it, it was interesting to see just how kind of low power everybody was versus yeah. the way things are now. I mean, you look at, the current Green Lantern title, and you know, we're smacking down new gods, and you know, mm. basically just. Uh, 
oh yeah, this is every month in a lot of the books. It's like, oh, oh or you know, the multiverse is collapsing. We got, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I wonder too. I want like if this event served two uh, purposes. One, of course, oh hey, it's an event we could tie every DC book into. So hey, mm-hmm. cha ching. Uh, or as we like to say here, yes. Uh, we need the money, gimme, gimme. That <laughs> and two, I wonder if they like you know the decision was made. Hey. We're going to kill off Hal, you know, have him redeem mm-hmm. himself. So, hey, how about, you know, he saves the world, you know, saves the world. And we're going to use a previous Legion storyline and introduce Pharaoh mm-hmm. lad and, you know, kind of have a, uh, you know, a, a gotcha there with, ha, made you look. Um, and the fact that it was weekly was interesting. I yeah. Mean, I get, but, uh, I mean, the, the power creep really starts ramping up i think from this point on because it's you know it had been it's been what 10 years since crisis things are oh yeah things are starting to you know come back up and be um you know more like they were back during the Mm -hmm. you know the the pre-crisis era so pretty soon we're gonna have to have superman juggle some planets again that's right All right. Uh, you want to move on to number three? You bet. All right. Uh, all right. So of course, yes. Again, November nineteen ninety six, the final night, number three. Uh, was, huh, keeping hope alive. Uh, Who's hope? Oh. <laughs> Wait, isn't there like a whole core devoted to that? <laughs> uh. All right, so keeping hope alive. So again, same creative team. With the life-giving energy of the sun depleted, Earth begins to quickly freeze over. Those who can attempt to quell panicking mobs and civil unrest, but it proves to be a difficult period for all. All right, here we go. Guy Gardner turns warriors into an ad hoc medical center and other heroes labor around the clock in an effort to save as many lives as possible. (sighs) Etrigan the demon broadcast a transmission straight from hell, <laughs> offering to save the people of Earth. The cost for such an act, however, would be the souls of every human being on the face of the planet. Earth is united in its adamant refusal to accept the demon's help. That's weird. Why was it Etrigan? I mean, maybe I I didn't read something at that I, point, I don't but know. shouldn't it have been like Satanus or Neuron or something? I would think so, but hey. Or was that Etrigan actually trying to help? But it's like, oh yeah, it's going to cost you all your souls. But yeah, you'll be alive. <laughs> you know, it may have just been. It may have just come down to name they, name name they, recognition. They like Etrigan. They wanted to use Etrigan. Yeah, so that's maybe. What they used. So I guess that just. I don't know. It just seemed weird that they they used him instead of one of the actual like devils of the DC universe. Yeah. Uh, Wait, it was Mephisto all along. Ah. <laughs> Uh, the, oh, here we go. The Spectre uh, travels to the spiritual center of Earth to offer comfort and warmth to the Earth Mother, Gaia. Uh, at the Star Labs Command Center, the news grows worse. Brainiac 5 determines that the sun is shrinking in size, but not in mass. It will soon go <laughs> supernova, and the resulting flare of solar energy will turn the planet into an ash cinder. Which we saw... In issue number one. Oh, yes. <laughs> New Tamarin. <laughs> yes. I love how they're like, oh, we don't have to worry about freezing now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're just going to get blowed up good. <laughs> the Phantom Stranger takes Dusk on an astral journey across the planet, showing her images of hope and the internal sh- struggle of humanity. Fire, Firestorm, Satana, and Ray reunite a family in a small South American village. Sentinel, Jade, and Obsidian save even more people in Kyoto. Wonder Woman uses her magic lasso to repair a damaged bridge, while Warrior rescues even more people with his unique Valdarian superpowers. <laughs> Wasn't he shoveling with his hand at one point? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Superman visits his parents in Smallville. Without the power of the sun to energize him, his powers are quickly fading. He fears that this may be the last time he will ever see his family. Okay, and again, it's not in the synopsis, but isn't this like the last issue of this page? You know, guys sitting in warriors drowning his sorrows. He's like, wait a minute, green? <laughs> <laughs> what? Huh? Yeah, so where, where could that come from? We don't see it yet, but something appears in front, or someone appears in front of him. Uh huh. I wonder who that could be. Hmm. 
<laughs> Wonder what comes between issue three and four. Could it be Parallax? Who could it one? be? <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> it's just how. <laughs> okay, so what do you think of three? I mean, it was good, but it was kind of like two, where it's just like a bunch of little stories. It's, and... Yeah, it's a bunch of little stories. And I mean, th- there's no way you can really kind of personify it's a force of nature. So how do you, you know, you, you, you see how individual yeah. people deal with that, I guess, you know? Yeah. Cause, cause the rest of the time, it's just the heroes going around saving people. And it's just like, you know, basically like, Oh, we can't lose hope. We can't lose can't this. Lose yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good series. I mean, the art's fantastic. Oh yeah. Eminem's an awesome artist and, and Kessel's a good writer. So, um, and I think it was, I think it was good of them to keep it at four issues. I mean, and, and, they, and and weekly, otherwise we would have stretched yeah. this out for four months, and then all the you know the regular books would have to decide. Oh man, how how are we going to tie this in for four months? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and you know maybe, I mean, when you get right down to it, it's four issues plus the parallax, so it's five total issues, right? Yeah, maybe it could have been cut down to four total issues. You know? Yeah, maybe combine I mean, two and three in the one. Yeah, or something like that, or yeah. you know, condense it down so that you you still hit all the beats, but yeah. I mean, you know, after a while, it, you were kind of getting hit over the head with the fact that, hey, there's nothing they can do, so they just do what they do. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, again, <laughs> I think two and three were kind of similar in theme, so they, yeah, they could really mm-hmm. could have combined two and three. All right. Do we want to get to uh, the moment, Will? Parallax? You bet. All right, kids. Parallax. Emerald Knight number one. Again, November 96. Yeah, that's the title. Emerald Knight. <laughs> All right, kids. Once again, writer, friend of the show, Ron Mars. This is Ron Mars. You are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Penciler, Mike McCone. Anchor, Mark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Another really good artist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought. I think this might have been uh, my favorite issue art wise this time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. Art, penciler, Mike McCone. Anchor, Mark McKenna. Colorist, John Calise. Uh, Letter, Chris Eliopoulos. Editor, Kevin Dooley and Eddie Braganza. All right, so yes, Mr. Moore is tying Marvel and DC together once more. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Parallax has followed Cyborg Superman to the end of the universe. That is literally the case as both face each other at the so-called wall. Literally the end of the universe. Yes. <laughs> the boundary between the known universe and the source. Finally, Parallax wants to erase Cyborg from existence because he destroyed Coast City. Cyborg does not go down without a fight, but in the end, Parallax annihilates his opponent. Yeah, does he? Well, he puts him in the wall. Well, I don't know if he, his consciousness goes into that wall because I think later on uh, he has to come out because he's back during rebirth. Well, yeah, the- well, yeah, well, yeah. Cause once Superman goes uh, electric, um, I forget that oh, it's been a while since I read those, but Superman ends up at the wall and oh. like that's the containment suit Superman wears has like circuitry in it, so like Cyborg's consciousness oh. hitches a ride in it. Yeah. Ah, uh, gotcha. I wondered how he got back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it says Parallax annihilates his opponent. Yeah, right. Suddenly, Cal Rayner, how Jordan's successor is Green Lantern, appears and tells Parallax about the Sun Eater and how Earth is on the verge of destruction. Cal, okay, wait, I- now, hmm. I have a question I don't understand. Hmm. Kyle disappears while he's in the sun. Yes. Did Hal teleport him there? How how did he just get there? I mean, did I, it, it did it, it was it this issue? I swear, Kyle threw out a line where he's like, "I I asked the ring to find you or something." I'm like, since when did he get so skilled with that ring? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, because he's in the sun. Hey, can I go home? And then I, it was kind of left vague. And, I, and, I didn't understand it. Unless in his desperation, he, he did something with that ring. I don't know. Uh. Cal, yeah, Cal has Parallax for help, but does not get an immediate reply. Instead, Hal wants to be left alone to think about it. In the process, Parallax travels to Earth to visit the people who were most important in Hal Jordan's life. First up is Guy Gardner. <laughs> they often, yeah, most important. They often fought each other, but in the end, Hal could not think of anyone better to watch his back. Second comes John Stewart, who lies in the hospital. Parallax not only talks to him, but also heals John so that he's able to walk again. Kind of important. <laughs> oh, yeah. Keep an eye on that, kids. Uh, after spending some time at the grave of Oliver Queen, 
Huh, what happens there, I wonder? Well, they don't show it here, but if you're <laughs> interested, kids, read, read Green Arrow Quiver by uh, Kevin Smith. Uh-huh, and Phil Hester and yes. Andy Parks, I think, does the ink. Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, Parallax visits Tom Kalamaku, the, be- the best friend in his non-superhero life. And last but not least, Hal talks to Carol Ferris. She immediately recognizes something important is about to happen in his life, so she says that she loves him and wishes him goodbye. Something and then he talks to somebody else. Oh, yes. <laughs> then Parallax returns to the former center of Coast City and materializes Ganthit, whose essence somehow was within him the whole, all the time. <laughs> well, yeah, didn't it? Was that the end of 63? They merged? I mean, we know where it happened. <laughs> yeah, he was there. It's just like, okay, so taking continuity from, you know, coming continuity into account. Nothing Ganthet says there disrupts the future continuity. Yeah. Because he's, he's even cryptic about some things too, you know, about and more. I think he says and more or something like that. I think, yeah. Um, which is cool because, you know, he says, you know, you talked about you betrayed us, but I don't, I feel like you, know, the guardians had to know what was going on all the time, which is why they didn't stop him. Right. Yeah. So that's, what, that's what I said before. I'm like, yeah. did, they, did they plan for this? Or are they just like, they pull a Doctor Strange and be like, okay, let's look in the, okay, out of 14 million uh, realities, the only way, <laughs> the only way this comes out good in the end is if we let him blow everything up, most of us uh-huh. die. Or most of us are. And come back later. Get to have to be reborn later, yeah. Yes. <laughs> just like it, just like in Infinity War, everyone got snapped away, but hey, hey, in five years, everyone's going to get brought back. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> Nine years. But yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so Hal expels, uh, Ganthet. Uh, <laughs> yes, who's, uh, despite Hal's betrayal, Ganthet still thinks Jordan was the most heroic Green Lantern of all. Oh, yeah, vindication. See, I like, well, I, I, I feel that. like, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, of course, love Hal Jordan. I feel like, um, I feel like the Guardians kind of set him up for this, and Ganthet was in there making sure that he was still doing okay. Uh, right. <laughs> I don't know. That's again, That's again, <laughs> cosmic machinations by the Guardians. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. But what about this? Uh, he offers how a ring again. That I was gonna say. What happened to that ring? Okay. <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> I mean, I guess he could have reabsorbed it, or something, but I'm just like, I, guess, yeah. I don't know. I mean, if how had accepted that ring, would he have still been able to like do anything against the Sun Eater? Or would his power I... levels have gone come back down? Or I don't know. That just seems weird. Right. I think the ring that, again, it's it's more symbolic. It's just like, oh, hey, yeah. look, he's redeemed himself, and yeah. But you know, the ring that that we get comes from Hal in the past, yes. right? Is that mm-hmm. the, that's the one, the ring that can replicate itself. Yeah. <laughs> Is Parallax in there going? Don't do it! Don't do it! <laughs> no, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so he offers Hal a ring, but disappears after Parallax denies his offer. After that, Parallax contacts Cal Rayner. He shall tell the other heroes that Parallax will help them to save the Earth. I don't know why he tells Cal to tell him that, because he shows up and tells him himself. I know. <laughs> Sorry, spoilers. <laughs> Again, is that just miscommunication because this is Ron Mars, Carl Kessel's writing for, so. I, you know, I think they did it because if you didn't want to buy this part of the crossover, you had to have it in the main crossover. Yeah. So, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, just or maybe it was a final, you know, kick for Kyle. You know, oh, yeah, I couldn't even trust you to do that. I'll do it myself. No. <laughs> I don't oh. think that's what it was. <laughs> I'm just looking at the notes here. The statues of lanterns on display in Warriors are Salak, Larvox, Brick, and Brun. Uh, which are, I think, all still alive, right? That's what I think. Yeah. I mean, isn't? I mean, I thought Salak survived. Uh huh. And we see yeah, and Brick. I Brick- mean. Yeah, Brick's, Brick's still around, because I think she shows up next issue, uh, you know, in 81, I believe. Well, but she also showed up during the Guy Gardner. Yeah, right? yeah. One of the lanterns. Yeah. That's, that's what, what I'm I saying. Thought. Yeah, she's she's been <laughs> floating around. So I guess he just decided to put up statues of people who are still around. <laughs> but yeah, kids, the scene at Oliver Queen's grave will be heavily elaborated upon much later in Green Arrow Quiver. <laughs> <laughs> heavily. Heavily. <laughs> like, for issues and issues 
and issues. <laughs> oh my god, I know that's like a retcon later on, but it would just be so funny if in issue four, if like when Hal shows up at like Star Labs, just looks at Superman's cape, and he's like, "What are you looking at?" Oh, nothing. <laughs> So that's where he pulled that DNA from. He's just yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So any other thoughts on uh, your boy? No, I mean I thought this was pretty good. I I didn't necessarily like the fight, the quote unquote fight scene at the beginning between him and Cyborg Superman. I that I didn't think that was you know anything, and it was it really fit the tone of the rest of you know Final Night, really somber and you know kind of a downer, and um, really setting up for what's to come in number four. Oh yeah, I mean, do you think the whole cyborg thing was just like him tying up them, make let him tie up loose ends? You know, the murderer of Coast City. Yeah, I think so. And then I mean, he comes back anyways. So. Yeah, exactly. It's like you know, you know, the cyborg Superman was going to come back. All right, ready for four? You bet. All right, the final night, number four. You'll never guess when this took place. November nineteen ninety six. I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the final night with a K. <laughs> Uh, yeah, same team, same creative team as the first four, or the first three. Uh, Lex Luthor devises yet another plan in the hopes of saving Earth. With the foreknowledge that the sun will soon go supernova, Luthor has designed a network of interlinking force field relay switches. The Flash manufactures a half million of these items in <laughs> under 12 hours. Working together, the machine should create an energy grid large enough to protect Earth from the sudden explosion of solar energy. The only problem lies in the fact that they must be physically deployed at the point of Nova. Invariably, the person responsible for such a task is not likely to survive the experience. Superman volunteers to pilot the ship that will deploy the force fields. Which, I, I mean, I think, you know, Superman was like, you know, I'm willing to sacrifice myself. Especially since I don't... But, he, but two, I mean, the reason he gave them kind of made sense. He's like, hey, you know, hopefully... My powers jumpstart power. quick and, you know, a giant supernova. <laughs> Hopefully my, it, it jump, jump starts my powers <laughs> and then I can survive it. Uh, while the others discuss the situation amongst themselves, Pharaoh sneaks aboard Dustcraft and Flat takes off. He refuses to allow someone as important as Superman to sacrifice himself. Parallax arrives and offers to help with the exception of Bat, <laughs> with the exception of Bat, man. Batman, who? my yes, favorite exactly. character. <laughs> yeah, who? Uh, most of the heroes are happy to see him. Batman still re remembers Parallax as the self-appointed god who attempted to recreate the universe. Oh, that's why you love Hal Jordan. I am God. <laughs> that's got to be it. <laughs> uh, who attempted to recreate the universe? Parallax flies. <laughs> Hal should have been like, "Yeah, are you gonna? How are you gonna stop me, Batman?" Yeah. <laughs> Parallax. He's got a yellow batter rank. Sorry. No. <laughs> Wouldn't Parallax gobble that up? <laughs> Parallax flies <An> out. <laughs> Parallax flies out toward the sun and pulls Pharaoh away from the edge of the sun's corona before it has a chance to kill him. Generating a wave of green energy, he sends Pharaoh back home. Parallax then turns his attention on the sun while chanting the oath of the Green Lantern Corps. Hal flies into the center of the sun, destroying the Sun Eater. He releases all of his vast power to reignite the sun, but at the cost of his own life, Earth is safe once again. However, his body is perfectly preserved in stasis at the center of the sun. That's important. It will come back. I yes, promise. kids, remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I love the list of all the characters in it. It says, Parallax, Hal Jordan, apparent death. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, he does kind of die, though. He does die, yeah. Does. Uh, ish, because Parallax is kind of, like, grafted onto his soul, and his soul is in kind of purgatory. So, yeah, he does die. Yes. Uh, oh, so this is saying the, the final appearance of Dusk, so I guess that Dusk character never comes back after this. Hmm. Get some cameos like Wildcat, uh... Oh my god, there's a couple characters on here. It says they're only on the cover. Oh. They're not even. <laughs> I mean, okay, well, here's all the characters that are on the cover that don't appear in this issue <clears throat> Aquaman, Big Barda, Black Canary, Dr. Light, Green Arrow, Impulse, Martian Manhunter, Mr. Miracle, and Superboy. Nice. They're all on the cover, dude. <laughs> but they do not appear issue. in the issue. <laughs> all right. Uh, 
just looking at the notes here. So, yes, this issue is the last official appearance of Hal Jordan as Parallax. He appears next as a spirit in Day of Judgment number two. By issue oh, five okay. of the series, he will become the new host for the Spectre. So, yes, kind of, kind of, sort of the last appearance of Hal's Parallax. Yeah. Um, and then we get, and then he's Spectre, so from 99 until late 2004, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then 2005 is when, I think it's early 2005 when Rebirth hits, right? Yeah. 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 Or is it late 2004? I don't know. Uh, I'll, I shall look that up. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I said, it takes Superman several weeks before his powers fully return to normal. Oh yeah, did you see the uh, little? They have all those, they have those little tag lines on the, each cover. Did you see what the one on uh, issue four was? Emerald Dawn. Yeah. <laughs> Kitty, I wonder Kitty. where that came from. Maybe Emerald Dawn in Emerald Dawn two. See, see, uh, some of the first episodes of this podcast, kids. <laughs> uh, okay, it looks like uh, it says it's December. It's on sale date was October. Of 2005, so it was late 2005. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. I was. Th- oh, that makes sense. Okay, I was thinking early, late 2004 and 2000. No, yeah, yeah. it was or late 2005 and 2006. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. That makes sense. Uh, oh, but the speaking of Emerald Dawn too, it would have been funny if uh, Parallax would have visited Hal's old cellmate. Remember him, who we never saw again. <laughs> Keeping your nose clean, boy. <laughs> As the Spectre. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, I didn't read that. I never read that Spectre series. I mean, so yeah, actually, I once either. we get there, oh, that'd be awesome to... if he showed up. I bear, I bear guarantee he probably doesn't show, but that would be, that would be funny. Yeah, and then he also shows up in JSA, I think, like right at the end before Rebirth kicks off, like JSA number thirty-five or something. What I the Spectre? Remember. Yeah, I'll have to look. Maybe. There's a JLA. Oh yeah, I, oh yeah, the JLA one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I think he also shows up in like JSA as well, but I'm trying to. Uh, oh, well, you know what? I think I I remember the JLA one, and I think he shows up in uh, the Green Lantern book too, because I think they set up that status quo where it's like, oh yeah, for most of the time, nobody remembers how Jordan's the Spectre and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's see if I can find it real quick. But yeah, kids, uh, there it is. All right. Uh, okay, it looks like it goes JLA the Spectre Soul War. Oh, that's around. Uh, Green Lantern number is 150 or so. Uh, so there's still three years left. Uh, Green Arrow, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, Green Lantern. JSA 60 through 62. And at some point during all of this, there's the Green Lantern Dragon Lord series, which was a three issue uh, series. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, so, yeah, cool. yeah, this was November 96. Yeah, he doesn't become the Spectre until what, 90, 99? 99, yep, yeah, Day yeah. of Judgment. So yeah, we got a little bit of time there. Now, Three more years puts us at about 36 more issues. One, that's getting close to when Mars leaves the title, right? Um, I think, so. yeah. Well, well, he leaves around one, was it 125 or so? So, I mean, it might be, yeah, that might be before he leaves. So, I can look that up too. Haha. I'm looking, I'm pulling up our schedule now. So, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, they, yeah, we're going to do. There's like two weeks in uh, kind of like the middle uh, end of uh, August. We're going to be doing the Day of Judgment in like two week, two different weeks. So, gotcha. So stay tuned, kids. Okay, the day, the day, the Day of Judgment uh, tie-in for Green Lantern is one nineteen. So, okay, it looks like his last issue was one twenty-five. Yeah, yeah. If I, I, between remembering Jay- that, I think he did say that when he was on here. Yeah, Jay Farber takes over with 126 after him, yeah, think, and is but yeah, I think he, he he's on there for like two or three issues before um. Uh, 129 is when Judd Winnick takes yeah. over, yeah, and then Winnick leaves around what 150, I think. I'm trying to remember, I thought he stayed around a little longer, but I don't know. Can't remember. He's still on 150. A little over a year until we get the rebirth. We'll get the rebirth in April of next year. Well, that's cool. And remember, kids, I talk, I keep promising you, episode 100 will be uh, the JLA Avengers uh, crossover. So, Looks like there was a fill-in around 156 for Winnick, but he's still on as of <laughs> 163. I think he might have ran... Oh. I think he might have run until, like, 
what that last arc or two because remember mars came back for like that last arc mm-hmm. before rebirth i think i've got ben robb as the writer on 165 yeah, okay oh well there's a green arrow crossover in there somewhere i wonder if is that the crossover uh-huh. probably 70 yeah i guess ben robb is the one that uh, finishes it off until until mars ron comes. mars yeah. takes it on again in i guess he got the last six issues yeah, it's like the last arc before the mm-hmm. it going into rebirth. Yeah, yeah. Ron Mars on one seventy six, and he'll finish it off to at one eighty one. So, mm-hmm. wow, there's really only, you know, Mars, Finn Rob, and then Judd Judd Winnick, and then Jay Farber does a few issues. So there's really not that many writers for the rest of the series. Mm-mm. You know? Oh yeah, no. Very cool. Uh, trying to just looking at the schedule here. When does our Spectre start? Spectre? Oh, uh, yeah, we'll start the first couple Spectre issues towards the end of November. Like I said, Day of Judgment is like September. So yeah, we got a little bit to go. All right, William, anything else? Or should we tell them what's coming next week? Let's tell them what's coming next week. All right, well, we only got two issues next week. We got Green Lantern 81, which I'm sure you'll have thoughts on. Uh, really? I wonder why that would be. Funeral for a Hero? <laughs> And then 82 is basically like a self-containing note. It's when uh, Cal gets to hang out with Donna's son. Oh, I don't, see, I don't remember that issue. I'm looking forward to I mean, I read it. I'm sure yeah. I did. I just I think I think Donna has to go to court for, you know, for the divorce or whatever. And she has Cal to watch him. So very cool. Yep. And then in two weeks, we'll start some of that Justice League stuff. Because in two weeks, Justice League of Midsummer's Nightmare three issue miniseries. All right. Awesome. And then, oh, so. One, two, and three weeks we'll do the crossover with Lilith and our uh, Green or Justice League Justice Society uh, podcast. So we'll cover those first four issues of JLA. Awesome. On the two shows. Yep. And then the week after that, Green Lantern Flash, Faster Friends, one and two. So yeah, lots of lots of uh team of you'll see lots of guest stars for about the next month, kids. So. <laughs> Between that fu- or that funeral next time and then yeah, lots of Justice League stuff. So all right, kid. <laughs> Oh, wait, and then the week after that is uh, Green Lantern 83 through 86. Isn't that when, uh, oh, what's her, uh, what's her, is it fa- Fatality? Is that, her, is that what she calls herself? Is that when she first shows up? Uh, I, th- I thought it was in the 80s there somewhere. But yeah, kids, someone with a grudge against Jon Stewart. <laughs> oh, gosh, who could that be? Uh, Retribution is a one of, it's a 83 starts a three part arc. Yes. Uh, let's see. Yep, Fatality, that's where she first shows up. Yep, yep. Very cool. All right, so yeah, so that's going to be big. Oh, and we find out, oh, maybe Hal did more to John than just uh, give him uh, the use of his legs back. Ooh, I wonder nice. what that could be. <laughs> All right, kids, so lots of homework, so please send your thoughts. Hey, and send your condolence cards to Will Allred. Uh, the funeral's next <laughs> week. Uh, Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail. Oh, my God. Do you want to write a eulogy for Hal Jordan? <laughs> You're a writer. Uh, well, we have his last will and testament. Are we going to do that at some point? We can. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that, yeah you, don't wanna, you, don't want, you don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. Send your thoughts, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail, 614-382. 2737, that's 614 38 capes. And remember, you can follow Sector 2814 on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, join the Green Lantern fan group on Facebook. Uh, please go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Every episode of every show gets a video, so check out all our regular episodes, our creator interviews. Uh, most importantly, if you can, please subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, again, you get early access to those creator interviews. Uh, and as always, once a month, Mr. D.D. Chichester talks to me and Lilith about one of his comics he, uh, he wrote. I got the good mic out for you guys. And Patreon-exclusive superhero movie brackets. We will find the worst superhero movie of all time at by the end of the year. So get on board. We've only done two so far. So episodes. So catch up and strap in. All right. And again, if you want to help support us, got it. Go pick yourself up with Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks merch. Find it all, all in one place. That's Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. 
All right. And find the absent Matt Kona everywhere on social media at Matt Kona. M-A-T-T-K-O-N-A. See you later, bunkies. <laughs> That's right. Go fallen, kids. All right. Mr. Will Allred, the grieving widow, master of the <laughs> core, master of the quantum zone, master of the core crossover division. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Walred. That's at W A L L R E D. Uh, that's that'll get Gmail. That's Twitter and Facebook and probably some other social media places that I don't even remember setting up. But uh, you can also find uh, comics that I have uh, written. At the first one being Crossover Division at crossoverdivision.com. Uh, the third issue should be going to the printer in I hope a couple of weeks. So we'll be sending those out from the Kickstarter real soon. Uh, you can also find Diary of Night at diaryofnight.com. Uh, and let's see. Oh, uh, I also, uh, along with the writer, Kevin Joseph, uh, we do a podcast every week called explain yourself where we bring uh, Kickstarter comic book, uh, creators that are, have Kickstarter projects running and, uh, we, uh, have them explain themselves. It's kind of in the title. <laughs> so, and of course, uh, you have great taste. So you love, uh, Quasar, just as much as you love Green Lantern. And if you want to find out more about Quasar, you can do that at the Quantum Zone, quantumzone.org. Hey, boys, you look at the party? I love the party. I'll put it in my navel. <laughs> he goes limp in my grip. All right, kids. So, yes. Star Blast, the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> oh, that's right. All right, kids. Thank you for joining us again. Come back in one week. As we literally put Hal Jordan the rest for a while. Three years. Guess <laughs> DC guest stars galore in this, that issue 81. <laughs> and then, like I said, Hal's, Hal meets Donna's son, so. And then Fatality That's coming true. after JLA. Yeah, after all the JLA, yes, kids. Got, then we got lots of JLA stuff coming, so. Like I said, guest stores, lots of guest stores for the next month or so. so. Alright, come back next time. And remember, Will told you it was a hero. You guys just didn't want to listen. Good night. Uh, I told you so. <laughs> I told you. Hello, I'm Anthony. And I'm Dr. Issues. And we're hosts of Capes on the Couch, the podcast where comics get counseling. Superheroes don't always get to go home happy. That's where we come in. We offer psychiatric and mental health analysis of comic book characters. So check us out at capesonthecouch.live and across all social media platforms at Capes on the Couch.